Hello, this is Penny Douglas and Sean, and we are going to tackle a pretty heavy subject today, socialism. We wanted to address this because we have seen that uh, many Americans, especially of the younger generation, have been taught to think that socialism is a, a better thing than the way our country has been run for 200 years. <laughs> and um, they don't seem to know the history of socialism and what socialism really is. So we wanted to talk about that today. And um, my expert on socialism and forms of government is Sean. So I want him to really talk about the, the aspects of socialism that are actually a threat to the homeschooling that we all love and um, are so happy to be able to have the freedom to do in our country. And it's a hard fought for freedom that even in the 30 years ago it was not even here available for us, even in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, homeschooling was not legal and it was very hard to do without the threat of imprisonment and getting your children taken away from you. And I. I know that a lot of homeschool moms today don't even realize that. So we wanted to talk about what is happening in our country and with our young people regarding socialism. So take it away, Sean. Okay, so first of all, to play the devil's advocate a little bit and address some of the problems, the issues, why a lot of people are gravitating now towards socialism is because they see the wealth gap. They see the you know issues of people that can't get the health care that they need because we have a broken health care system everything's overly expensive there are people that are dying you know that that need help and they can't afford to get the help they need and there's there's a lot of inequalities a lot of problems that are that are out there in the world you know that's you know we can't ignore those things and act like that's not a problem like there's no issue there are issues of of that sort of nature but one thing that I would like to point out is a lot of that can actually be traced to socialism. A lot of that can actually be traced to the fact that our nation has gone from a more free market economy to a more tightly controlled and restricted economy. And what we have is really a, a form of pseudo capitalism. It's much more close to an oligarchy than it really is to a true democratic republic. And that might sound a little bit conspiracy out, out there to some people, but if you really look at the way things are being run, if you deal with lobbying and corporate lobbying and, and the way that Congress is running things and the abuses of power of the executive branch as well as the judicial branch, then you start to see where things have broken down. And the issue that we have centers on the fact that it's too much centralization of power. Hi, Leah. Thanks for coming on. And that's the inherent issue with socialism, is that it heavily relies on a very strong centralization of power so that people's lives are, are very tightly governed by an administration as opposed to them and, and having the freedom and having the choices and the responsibility that right. comes with that. Mm -hmm. So the trade-off is if it is a free market economy. If it is more lies affair, people have to make their own choices, their own decisions. It is more true capitalism. Then they have to take responsibility for their own lives. They have to find the way to feed themselves and their children. And, you know, they have to, they have to make a, their own way in the world. Improve themselves and be likable people and people who will attract other people to themselves and to their ideas. And that can be hard for some people. And for some people it can be impossible and they may be dependent upon charity. They may be dependent upon others helping them. The thing about forms of government is when it comes to people having needs, there doesn't necessarily have to be government um, policy set in place to take care of the needy. There's examples of nations that had all sorts of different forms of government that basically didn't even have impoverished people that had no options. And that wasn't even because of the, the government at all. The form of government they had was actually irrelevant. It was because culturally 
It was seen as your civic duty. It's what you had to do as a person. You had to take care of your family, who, right. how, whoever they were, however distant they were, cousin or whatever, you had to take care of them. Right. If you didn't, you were considered a low life by the whole mm-hmm. culture. Mm-hmm. And that, that was Korea before, you know, it became South and North Korea before all of this recent, all this modern history, Korea had the, the cultural mechanism that they, they believe that you had to take care of family. And if you did not take care of family, then you were just worthless and you were, you were shunned. So people took care of their and family. In members. Bible times, Ruth and Naomi, Naomi and the kinsman redeemer and the family took care. Of that, that was a mechanism other. that was a part of Israel's culture too. Yeah. yeah so there, there are, there are various cultures that did that. So culturally, People took care of each other. And then they're in Korea, same example. Families. If if families didn't take care of someone, then the Buddhist priests actually did. The temples were actually there so that if someone had no family, if they had no one, they could go there and they could get fed. They could get cared for. The only people that, you know, just would live like vagabonds are people that chose to. So in our case, the Christian churches should be stepping up and yeah. taking care, and they do in a lot of in, in a lot of ways. So the reality is, a lot of poverty and and the things that we we see in the world is really a matter of individuals and families and the the cultural centers of our nation not being empowered and being motivated properly to take yeah. care of the poor and take care of those with needs. And there are a lot of people with needs. There are a lot of homeless people in America. And that, that is a, that's a shame on our nation for such a wealthy, such a well-to-do nation to have so many people that are just destitute. That's, that's a real shame on our culture. Mm-hmm. That's not a governmental problem. That's a yeah. cultural problem. Right. That's something where we that's have... That's a family problem. That's a family problem. Mm-hmm. That's a sign of the brokenness of, of what we have allowed to happen to our society. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one thing that I want to point out that I want to say is that that's that's the fix is not in government and the issue is what you have with government and where I'm going to say this this is becoming a problem it, it's, it's been a problem for a long time now but this is where the problem comes from really is that people are actually living in a relative amount of of economic oppression under our present government under the way things are run you know strictly speaking we're one we have one of the highest corporate tax rates in the world and we're supposed to be a capitalist nation we're supposed to be a democratic republic but we're we're actually right up there with a lot of socialist countries on the level of taxation Mm -hmm. and that's see the issue with the whole idea so in a lot of ways you could say that we run a lot like a socialist nation and and well in the welfare system and the things that we do and yet we have so many homeless people yeah we have so many problems the issue isn't that more money needs to be allocated the issue is that we need to get away from that system because it's actually taking too much money from people so they can't take care of their family to encourage industry and and um uh, business and people starting businesses of their own we, that needs to be encouraged instead of inhibited by taxes absolutely the greatest the greatest form of charity really is business is creating business and creating opportunity for everyone because that reciprocates that multiplies that expands there's growth when you just give money to someone it's just it's it's used and then it's gone that's it. That's all that ever happens. You know, it's, it's like the old adage. It's, it's a worn out adage. To... But if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach him how to fish, and he, he eats for a lifetime. That's, it's, it's, a, true, it's, a, it's a true idea. Even it's a though true we've heard thought. that over and over again, it really is. It, it keeps its, its credibility. It's and that's, that's where true. a lot of the issue is with the approach, Bye. is that with the whole concept of socialism, the whole concept of trying to bring bring about social justice through government we're trying to centralize power into the hands of a few and trust a few to do the job that is really meant for the many we're all supposed to take care of the people in our own sphere of influence and it's it's a systemic problem and it's something that we see that really you know it's 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 an attitude that we have gotten in this time this generation that we think somebody else 
should take care of us. Someone else should take care of our problems, should protect us, and so on and so forth. That entitlement mentality, yeah. And you know, and, and for some people, I'll give them, I'll give them credit. That it's because they want to see other people cared for, and they're upset about and troubled by mm -hmm. the people that are left behind and are not taken care of, and the crime and injustice and things of that nature. That bothers us too. We yeah. like that. That bo that bothers any good person, mm -hmm. but. The, the issue is that can only be fixed by cultural change, not by governmental change. Yeah. Governmental change does not make a good nation, a healthy nation, a happy nation. It doesn't take care of issues. The fact is the more centralized power you have, t it tends to be the more corruption. And yes. the more corruption there is, the less justice there is. Yes, and that money that's given to the great big conglomerate does not trickle down to the the man on the street. No, it's always it's always cost and overhead. It's always it's always spent and chewed up with those that are supposedly managing it and running it. Even mm -hmm. even with those that mean well, that ends up being the case. They end up eating eighty percent of it just in administration. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not an effective means of bringing change. The most Talk about powerful. The, the tribal, the one hundred twenty people knowing them so, versus. The Forms bigger. of government, they all have their ups and downsides. And there, there is no necessarily just purely evil form of government unless for it's some kind of a reverse theocracy and it's like a satanic nation or something of that nature. Unless you had something crazy like that, unless we're – and then you're having to just kind Genocidal, of – Genocidal. Yeah, it's, kill everybody not off. that that's never actually happened in the world, but mm – -hmm. Anyway, that's a very rare situation. For the most part, governments, they have their ups and downsides. But what we do see is that different forms of government, they serve to be either a, a factor, to, to be a, 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 a good context for good, decent human behavior, or a context that tends to more corruption and selfishness and self-centeredness, self-seeking. And, you know, a lot of that does have to do with the ideals of the people, too. A lot of it does have to do with cultural ideas and concepts and religion and the things that define worldview. But at the end of the day, the system of government is what controls a lot of incentives or disincentives, especially the stronger and more powerful that government is, the more centralized that government is. And the tendencies of socialism are to incentivize behavior that is based on, instead of doing the best you can and optimizing your performance to help others, it's actually to be as mediocre and as average as possible and expend as little energy as possible so that you can just enjoy what comes in from the collective. So it doesn't really give any kind of incentive to being the best excellent mm -hmm. and being a world changer and being an innovator. So the, the result is that you lack innovation. You, you, people stick to, they get compartmentalized. They stick to just doing one thing that, that is the thing that they can do. And instead of actually branching out and finding ways of helping others and making a change in the world, they just are content to just basically do the, the mediocre and nominal job that they have in front of them. And, and we see that attitude, and we see that happening in corporate America today, because that's that's the attitude, and that's that's the kind of system that we have right now is actually more towards socialism. So the funny thing is, people that think that they want socialism, they're wanting more of the same. And the funny thing is, socialism it would work on a small and a limited basis. If you look at the, the basic governmental structure of a family, you get rid of the terms and words and ideas of mother, father, siblings, so on and so forth. If you, if you turn it into a, into a more cold disposition, if you took a bunch of people that aren't actually related and put them in the, in the same position, living the same circumstances as a family, it's basically socialism in a lot of cases. And it works, and that's okay. But the reason why it works with a family is because everyone really is looking out for each other's best interests. Mm -hmm. And it's not too complex. It's not mm -hmm. too large of a number of people. So it's possible for everyone to know each other and know how to work together. And they get the feel for 
for their for their common culture and their common ideas and values. So we actually feel responsible for each other. It's not just uh, out of the kindness of our hearts that we're doing something. Yeah, and 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 there can there's a much there's much more of an ability to ensure that there's accountability if if whoever is in charge and whoever tends to have the household authority goes against everybody everybody in the family feels like tends to have a more of a feeling like they have a voice usually yeah and they can say something and they can do something about it so they can voice their concerns and again there's always the freedom to leave right which is something that is an issue with governments because now with borders and with all, all of the laws of visas and everything else, we don't really have the freedom just to Especially leave. Especially in a socialist or communist country. Yeah, and it, it gets it gets worse, and the more the more centralized the authority of the government is. Mm -hmm. So the reality is when, when you're asking for socialism, what you're asking for is for a select few to have more power over your life than they already do. Yeah. And the question I have for you, for especially those of you that, that may want socialism or are think you want socialism in your homeschoolers, would you want your next door neighbor to tell you how you should be running your life, how you should be spending your money and how you should run your affairs and your own raise you know, your household, children. how to raise your children? Mm -hmm. No. Well, that why would you, why would you then be okay with someone over in Washington, somewhere in hours and hours and hours away that you've never even seen them. They've never even seen you. They don't even know you. Yet they get to tell you what you do with the majority of your money. They get to set policy for how you're supposed to train your children and what you're supposed to do with them. In some cases, you're not even allowed to train them. You're not even allowed to do anything with them. Not they're allowed to teach they're like them. government property as yeah. soon as they're born. Not allowed to teach them anything about God. For sure. The reality is, I and mean, you could say, well, not all socialist states are like that. That's true. But the thing is, it's, it's their prerogative. When, when that much power is invested in an institution, they have the choice and they can decide that that's what's best for everybody. And you're giving them that power to make that decision. So the minute you're giving up the authority over your own money, the authority over anything, any of these freedoms that we, we were formed as a, formed as a nation yes. to hold these liberties, mm -hmm. as soon as you give those up, mm -hmm. You have given the government a beginning. It's it's like the old the old adage again about terrorists that if you give them an inch, that they will take a mile. That you can't mm -hmm. ever compromise. Well, government tends to be like terrorists. If you give them an inch, you give them one of your freedoms, they start taking all of them. All of them get eroded. Yes. And so the the inevitability is you can't fix the problems of the world with government. Right. Really, as our founding fathers established America, the Constitution, and the ideas of the Declaration of Independence, everything that we see that's there, they, their own assessment was the only reason we want to have this government is to prevent more tyrannical forms of government. Yeah. So in other words, a government only exists to stop worse governments from existing. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's that's actually taking, you know, taking almost exactly what the words of our founding fathers they what started they were saying. out so loose with the articles of, of confederation because they did not want a strong central and government. there were some that still believed that the constitution went too far and thought that it should have stuck with with the articles of confederation patrick henry was one of them he was actually really mad about the constitution he thought mm -hmm. the constitution was too was so centralizing too power too mm -hmm. much mm -hmm. so you know that's that's something to, to note and, and remember and understand that these different forms of government, they're not necessarily good or evil. You know, we've kind of gotten sold a bag of goods about somehow these ideas being really yeah. represented in the forms of government, but they incentivize or disincentivize certain human behaviors. And some forms of government only work on a certain level of complexity and on a certain level of capacity. Socialism can work with maybe a couple hundred people, maybe a couple thousand at the most. But when you deal with millions of people, it's impossible mm -hmm. for it to be a fair system. It's impossible for it to take care of people. So social justice, it, I mean, there is an issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there are injustices. But there are different ways of carrying out what needs to be done than just like 
oh, we all have to pay all of our money to this one group, and they're going to decide how to make sure that it gets distributed equally. And one, one of the biggest people. problems is the very idea that it's a matter of justice. It's not a matter of justice. It's a matter of mercy. Yes. It's a matter right. of taking care of those that are weaker. It's a matter of having a love and a, a respect for human life so that you do what you can to help those that are around you. Mm -hmm. And the biggest deterrent to that is not having the ability to take care of yourself. Right. Not being able to take care of yourself and your own family is a huge deterrent from being able to take care of anyone else around you. Yes. So what cuts into more household income, what cuts into more, more of our ability to prosper other than mortgages, other than land taxes and things of that nature, is just the government as a whole with income taxes and things that are taking a large chunk of the money that we make. And that is making it very difficult for what, what's really the more, more insidious thing is how regulations in fees and penalties and taxes, how they make it very difficult for small businesses to start. Mm -hmm. How all the red tape and bureaucracy. And for the employees' health insurance. And what a lot of people don't know is that 60%, 60 to 70% of American household income comes from small business. Yeah. So when the very system is set up and rigged to where you already need to be starting out with quite a bit of money to be able to work around all the bureaucracy mm -hmm. and deal with all the problems, then it's actually putting a major hole in the biggest sector of what we're depending on for our for our homes for our families yes so that's something you need to understand and what you need to understand as homeschoolers is if you give the authority and the power to a small few what's to keep them from deciding that they don't like your way of educating your children. Your independent way of thinking. So for too long in this bipartisan system of America, we have just taken it for granted that, oh, we gotta vote in the right people to make sure we get our way and make sure you know nobody takes away from us. And it's all been treated like this big struggle and this big fight between warring sides. And the reality is no one should have the power to be telling anyone else how to be living their lives, period. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be this fight. That, that's the problem is that government has become this winner-takes-all situation. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be. It never should have gotten to the point that is this wild and this out of control. So wanting socialism is like thinking that you can take something that's already there that clearly incentivizes the wrong behavior because when – when there is so much power to be to be found, when there's so much wealth to be gained, if you look at anybody that goes into Congress, anyone that goes into these positions of power in government, they end up extremely wealthy. Mm -hmm. They end up doing very well. If they were not, if they weren't already very wealthy, they become very wealthy. Mm -hmm. And if they already were wealthy, they become even wealthier than they were before. So it's it's a system that is making money for a select few. There is a political class. We are in a class war. It's there's and there's so many things that we're being fed that are that are red herring arguments, that are red herring issues. You know, there there we are not in a race war in America. We are not in a war of of ideologies between, you know, different religions or whatever. We are in a class war in America. There is a political class, there is a top few that are controlling the majority of the power over what gets done with our economy and over what's allowed in business and who's allowed to get into business. And from, from the Federal Reserve to all these other issues, these are things that power has been far too centralized with to far too few. And, and in a lot of cases, unelected hey. officials, individuals, we don't have the power to determine. We don't get to determine who's in the Federal Reserve. And we don't get to determine who's put in all of these different bureaucracies, all these different the bureaus. IRS. The IRS and the CIA and the NSA and mm -hmm. all of these different organizations and Department of Energy and all of these different mm -hmm. all these different FDA, groups. CDC. Technically speaking, mm -hmm. they they're unconstitutional. They shouldn't even exist because they're actually overextensions of the executive branch, which isn't supposed to have that much authority. 
isn't supposed to have that much power. Mm -hmm. Those bureaus are an abuse of power, and those are unelected individuals that are dictating policy, and policy is being treated like law, when technically, constitutionally, the only laws should be passed by Congress. Yes. So we have, we have a serious problem because we've already tended towards socialism. Yes. We've already tended to a heavy centralization and a, and a resultant abuse of power. It had been happening gradually. Now it's happening quickly, especially yeah. with education. And there was a jump. There was a point where it went really heavy, and that was under FDR. Mm -hmm. What a lot of people don't realize is what, whatever you think of the man personally, that's kind of irrelevant. At the end of the day, it was his abuse of executive power that got us here. He started those agencies. He's, he started those agencies, and he pushed that power. In fact, he's the reason why they had to change the law and pass the law so that a president couldn't have more than more than two terms. Mm -hmm. It was because he just kept going and kept getting in and kept going in the same direction. And honestly, it can, it can definitely be argued by, by, the his, by the history that his socialist reforms, the New Deal, actually caused the Great Depression to extend for more years than it had to. Yeah. So people tend to give credit to whoever is charismatic and they like, and they think, oh, well, it's gotten better because of him. Or they can argue, well, it's not his fault that it's not getting better. There's this and that. That that's that you know that's all just hearsay. That's it all just based on opinion. It seemed It seemed like the only answer for a lot of people. Yeah, and and again, it, it came down to the fact that what there what there needed to be was a restructuring of the American economy. There was too much debt. Mm -hmm. There was too much of an overextension of the money and the and credit. And honestly, the bankers and the banking system they should have been more compassionate for their own sake. Yeah. They should have realized that throwing people out of their homes and nobody else is there to buy them is a bad idea, is yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, So not do anybody any good. No, there needed to be economic recovery, and arguably there would have been, and it would have been much faster, and, and the economy would have righted itself. People would have righted their own behaviors in a way that worked, because yeah. that's, what, that's what human beings do. We adjust and we adapt. It takes artificial institutions and people with too much power that are pushing their own interests what is the to keep things invention? from working. Necessity. 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 And so and to sum it all up, socialism is not good. Yeah. It's the reason why we are in the mess that we're in right mm -hmm. now. And, I mean, it's not the sole reason. It's not the sole reason because a lot of it is a matter of losing the, the cultural values and understanding, losing – the family. principles of hard work and diligence and family sticking families, together. selflessness of taking care of each other mm -hmm. and seeing that we have a moral uh, imperative to take care of those around us. But yes. ultimately, this form of government and this gross centralization and abuse result in abuses of power. And the mindset of, of being um, entitled. It has fed the entitlement mentality. Mm -hmm. It has been a, a huge incentive to people to just ask so for more. Somebody else, yeah, have your hands out. They want want more. Instead mm -hmm. of building more, instead of creating more, they ask for more. And we, we're all set at a disadvantage because of the way the system is set they up. They demand and complain when they don't get it. And we all sense the unfairness that's there, yet we're tricked and we're confused and we're taken by universities and by the media and by certain politicians promising results that they're never going to deliver because they, no one ever can mm -hmm. into believing that somehow more of the same thing the is going to fix something. The question to ask when they're promising that is where is the money going to come from? Yeah, well, they'll always say that it's going to come from taxing the rich, but that, <laughs> that makes no sense. For one thing, the rich always find a way around taxes. They always do. Mm -hmm. For the other thing, the rich are the government. The political class is always the rich, is always the wealthy, and there has always been a political class. You can call me conspiracy theorist if you want, but that is historical. Throughout history, there has always been a political class. Money, and right now, we power. are dealing with a political class that is keeping us all from really having the right kind of, of freedom that we're supposed to Left have. Left to ourselves, we could make enough money to do well. Absolutely. And there, there's a lot of societal changes that need to come. There's a lot of changes in values where we need to start being more compassionate. We need to be taking care of others. But 
it also needs a change systemically where we do not have a system that actually incentivizes corruption and incentivizes mm -hmm. mediocre behavior and incentivizes people that are just putting their hands out wanting more instead and expecting someone else to take care of them and choking out anyone that wants to start something new, mm -hmm. choking out people that actually want to do good that actually want to create wealth and value for others mm -hmm. we need a system that incentivizes the right kind of behavior the right, right kind of attitudes right and that's not going to come with socialism that's not going to come with any highly centralized form of government right all right yay very good so that's what we wanted to get out to especially homeschooled moms who um, have been confused by the media and by what people are saying about compassion you know compassion is great and is what God expects from us but socialism is not how he wants us to carry out our compassion and um, we want the homeschooled children and students to know that um, this is what other people are being taught in the world today and um, they might be even getting these ideas from the the people that they listen to the music the the um, society in general but this is what is truth and this is what God wants us to do the way he set up our nation to begin with was not based on socialism at all in fact they tried socialism at Jamestown and it, it was a failed experiment <laughs> it's always been a failed experiment it's yeah never, it's never worked yeah, any any group that has tried socialism, it has never worked because we do have to have our own responsibility for our own lives and the ability to work for ourselves and see the the results of our work for us to be fulfilled as human beings. And that is not how socialism is set up at all. Nope. So that is the message that we wanted to get out today. I hope that some people will watch this and leave comments and um you can find me at uh, here at Changed by Love, also at Penny Hockey Douglas on Facebook, Penny Marie, and Penny with an EY, and also at my blog, which is Changed by Love, but it's also it's PennyDouglas.com. You can find Sean if you look wherever you can find me. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, my son. He I he's my friend on Facebook. He's on Facebook. He's on Instagram a lot. And is there any other? Yeah, place? you can follow me on Instagram at, at I am steadfast one. And that's a that's a one numeral one. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to um, explore this further or have your children um, talk to us about this because it's a real problem. For um, we've seen that some homeschoolers are actually um, thinking this direction that socialism is a good thing, and we want to try to. Um, help people, educate people so that they know that this is not the way that we need to go. And if we want to preserve our freedom to homeschool, we need to be uh, working against this trend of socialism. Yeah. And, and, and it's, important, it's important to be good apologists about this and to understand the issues where we're at today because we do have problems today. There are issues. There are things that need to get fixed in society. We have cultural problems. And, you know, we don't want to come with, like, the same old point of view of, like, oh, well, we just need capitalism and we just need to do this. No, what we need change in our society. We do need to have more compassion. We need to offer solutions on a good foundation. Yes, we, we need to Solid offer solutions, foundation. not just shoot down the what other people are, are saying are solutions. Even though, even though clearly their solutions are actually just more of the problem, still we need to understand where they're coming from. And and know that what they're seeing is a legitimate. There are legitimate issues that mm -hmm. are out there. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even like the topic of racism. I, I'm, I'm very much against the way everybody is running around pulling the race card and there is this strong push, more I would say in the media than in anything, yeah. to represent this race war that's going on in America. It's, it's fictitious. But there, there are some incidents of real racism that I've seen and that span across the spectrums of different subcultures and different ethnic groups and you know whether you're in the minorities or you're a white majority either way you can you can have people tr mistreat you because of your race or because of your religion or because of your ideology 
because, because you're you a Republican have, or you're a Democrat. Or because you don't have much money. Or because you don't have much money. And and so That's the thing we is, we, we don't ignore that discrimination, but we shouldn't put too much stock in just the title and the tag, and we shouldn't act as if that is the issue itself. The issue itself is... And government is not the solution. No, government is absolutely not the solution. To any of those things. Taking away people's freedom is not the way to get rid of the problems. Right. We have to band together and we have to come up with solutions. We have to come up with ways mm -hmm. to, to change and get people to think differently and to not live the same way that they've always been living, which, you know, is the trends that are going in a very bad direction with, with kids committing suicide, yes. with these shootings in schools, you know, these different things, these are real problems. But the answer and the solution is not government. No. We need to change our culture. There needs to be cultural change. Yes. There needs to be real community built. And that's what's going to alter the the course of events. And we as homeschoolers have the, the greatest uh, possibility of doing that because we have more time with our children to teach them and to to help them develop good character which will help develop a better society and a better cultural norm for behavior and and what's right and wrong and what's good and and how to treat people and honesty integrity all of those values we can teach and we can instill in our children because we have more time with them and we're there to teach them those things and we are, we're keeping them from being taught the other things in the public schools and in colleges and we're helping them to to develop the the basic foundation of thought and what's good and what's bad and what's biblical and what's right in God's eyes because I think they get confused when they hear these other these other forms of um, how to solve the problems and they, they think it sounds good and it sounds right, but it's not right and it has bad fruits and they don't know that unless they're taught. And so we're in the, the best position to be teaching our children those things. So we'll wrap it up now and thank you for coming on. Thank you those who catch the replay. Um, Heather, I'm glad you came on. And Leah, thank you for joining and we just, um, We'll probably do some more things like this later because this is very important and we're very passionate about the next generation learning the truth and knowing how to live and what's best and not just being carried away with the media and with what um, the trends are that are not going to be good for our, for our future and for the future of our children and grandchildren. We've got to think for ourselves. We've got to be empowered as individuals, as individuals that can build better families, and it's better families mm -hmm. that will build a better world. Right. Very good. Okay, we'll see you all later. Thanks for joining, and find us on Facebook and Instagram, and, um, and connect with us. We'd really appreciate that. Bye. Bye.